Good morning, good morning, kings and queens. Rise and shine for today is opportunity and favor, and it awaits you. I am so excited about this morning, Monday Motivation. Thank you for tuning in, Facebook, but we are live. This is Monday Morning Motivation, new week, new goals. What you, you can't hear what you don't reveal. I'm Coach Deb, and let me introduce to you my esteemed co-host, Lady Ashley. Show them some love, Lady Ashley. Hello, hello, good morning. I am so glad that you all are here to join this conversation. Look, I'm glad that you're awake, but I want you to be in tune because there's a lot of things that we're gonna say this morning that's gonna help you push your week forward. So tune in and just be blessed as you hear this conversation. Amen, facts on that sis, facts on that, simply because this is the day that the Lord has made and I am honored to have the queen in the house this morning. Y'all show your love for Demetra High, the real queen. I'm so grateful that she is here. Say hello to the good people, sis. Hello and good morning, good morning. Y'all wake up, we got something yeah. to talk about. I know yeah. that's right. We are, we, are, yeah. we are put in position this morning to, to be the actual, uh, um, the, be the, the deliverers. We're a deliverers today. And we're going to be used by God. I want you to share your story and how you overcame. Because, uh, you know, uh, I, I really feel blessed and fortunate that this platform is succeeding in, in being a place of healing, a safe, a safe space. And our, um, our topic mm -hmm. is uh, matters of the heart. But our focus is domestic violence. And since you got a testimony, I'm excited to hear about it. And I'm just going to give you the floor. I want you to start where you are comfortable because I do have questions set, you know, to ask you, but I just want you to set the, you know, go ahead and just break it out. Okay. Hey, Amen. Let me just uh, first of all say thank you for the, uh, the invitation. I, I don't take it lightly. And I, I praise God as always for the opportunity. I don't believe it. Anything happens by chance. And so um, I thank God for the opportunity um, uh, for you are dear to my heart. Sister Ashley is dear to my heart. And, and we're talking about matters of the heart. Yes, and, uh, and so my sisters matter to me. Uh, yeah. Women matter to me uh, because we all work, walk a road uh, a lot of times that's similar. Uh, and as I have uh, shared, and just to, to let you know, and, and, and that, I, that I've shared that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sick and tired of, of us tiptoeing around uh, the reality um, of some things that go on into our life because we can't be set free. We can't be delivered from it. So my story, as I share my story, I share it um, with, with the confidence and the assurance and knowing uh, that that God is a deliverer, and if He did it for me, He can do it for somebody else uh, All right. as well. Um, I was a teenage mother. Uh, I was um, I had my first child when I was 14 years old, and um, so um, the saying um, "looking for love in all the wrong places" mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's true because yes, um, as you as you are in that age group. Um, I was in the shadow of a sister who was uh, a beauty queen, a homecoming queen, and and uh, just very active um, with some things. And so I was known as her little sister. Uh, I didn't have my own name. I didn't have my my own identity, mm -hmm. uh, even with society. And mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so the you know the 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 first the first guy that came along and and said, "Oh, you pretty." You know, and I was like, what? You know what? Somebody yeah. said I was pretty, you know. Um, so that didn't catch you into that um, that that stage of life where you think is um, a love stage when in actuality, when you grow older, you find out it was it was an infatuation of it. Right. Um, I was a daddy's girl. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm not one that, you know, had the absentee father. Um, although my father was not in a home, I was a daddy's girl. Um, he, um, he, and I could talk to him and he would share things with me. Um, I think most of what I was, um, uh, that, that kind of was with, with me was my self-esteem. 
I had low self-esteem that was very, that was so low, it couldn't get any low. So by you saying things like you're pretty or those kind of things like that, that's, I'm easy, I was easy prey to that at 14 years old. Um, by the time um, I was um, 20 years old, I had had my fifth child. I got married uh, at the age of 18. Um, I didn't complete high school. Uh, I was in my senior year. As a matter of fact, I had um, had three kids at the time or two kids at the time. And my third child was born and the, the lady that babysitted my kids just all of a sudden left and went back to her hometown. So that left me um, without um, anyone to keep my children. And mm -hmm. so I had to make up a decision in my last um back then it was called quarters and it's called semesters mm -hmm. and the last semester of my senior uh year in school uh high school um i had to drop out of school because i had to take i i made that choice even at the young age not knowing and and but i knew i mamas took care of their kids because i had mm -hmm. i had a mama that took care one of one of the things my mother my mother shared with me during that time um because I believe that she was um, pouring into me because she knew my self-esteem was low. Mm -hmm. um, she said, hold your head up. She said, just because, um, you know, just because you're going through what you're going through, there are people who have been in the same boat um, and cannot talk any, you know, cannot say anything about you because where you chose to keep yours, they chose to get rid of theirs. There you go. And so, uh, or they would send them off for somebody else to raise. So you hold your head up high. And I, I remember that even right to this day, regardless of what goes <laughs> on in my life, uh, to hold my head up, up high. And so um, as I, um, once I, when I got married uh, at the age of, of 18, I never experienced uh, the, time span, or the time span between mama's house and marriage. So I never was one that was out with my own apartment, got to, you know, live that single life. I went from mama's house to marriage. Um, I am the third of seven children. So I was, um, I took care of my, my little brothers and sisters up under me while my mom worked, those kind of things. And then I went into a marriage where now I'm taking care of my own kids as well as, you know, now um, a husband. Um I was married for 19 years, um, and it, it actually, because my self-esteem was low, I'll be honest, you could say boo to me, and I'd just stay in the corner and just yeah. kind of be quiet, so I was like, I was a, um, a true puppet to that, and because I never got to, to find out who I was, I also didn't have anyone trying to pull that out of me as well. Um, and so um, there would just be times when I would get my kids, because now at this time, that I've, I've had, you know, I have five children. Uh, by the time I was 20, I had five kids. And it was almost like, you know, um, there was an a ownership. Right. And because there was an ownership, there was a dictatorship. Okay. And there were times that I would get up and, and I would go to the store and, and when I would... Um, come back it's like where you been why you took so long those kind of things is how it you know how it started mm -hmm. um the thing was is that if i knew then what i know now about red flags um it would it would have i would have gotten out along longer than what i stayed in right. um and then with that um just accusations um even if I told you what I was doing or where I was, that I, I was lying, you know, uh, wasn't truthful and those kind of things. And that is what not only not only me, but that's what my children lived among. And because it was somebody that at least cared enough to marry me, then I'm like, OK, that's that's this is where I'm supposed to stay. Yeah. Not only that, I love God and God hates the voice. And so I'm like, well. I'm I'm supposed to take it. That's right. That's that's where your mind goes. Where your mind you know, goes. I'm supposed to take it. Um, if I if anything that I purchase, um, I had to ask for money to do, even though I had a job. Can I have ten dollars for some bread? You know, can I have fifteen dollars to get 
you know, God, here, this is what you, this is your budget for groceries after that. So I had to go to the grocery store and making sure that seven people, you know, could, could eat off of whatever amount of money that I was given. Um, and my thing was, I, I totally put me on the back burner long as my children were taken care of. Um, in the physical, I was, I was fine. Um, I got peace when I was away from home. Uh, when I come back, um, you know, I could, I could just tell that it was just wasn't, you know, it wasn't um, what it was, it was supposed to be. But I, I stayed there because to me, I'm going to try to do whatever I can. I don't want God to be mad at me, yeah, you know, yeah. for leaving this. And, and that was a big part of it is that deal. I didn't want to disappoint God. His word says and, yes. and, you know, and I just, and so I went, um, I went on a, 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 in the meantime of all of this, what, what really kind of blew my mind was God called me in ministry. And I was like, wait a minute, God, you, you, you know, I'm being physically emotional. I mean, I, yes. by this time it's, it's, I went from ac accusations, words into actions of yes you have you're mm -hmm. lying to me slapped in the face you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um just those kind of things and and you know you better not tell and you had to go through the process of of making sure you didn't get hurt because i mean your children didn't get hurt because of the threat of if you do this then this is what i'll do kind of thing like that living with that and so therefore you know again my self-esteem was already low. I'm already naive to a lot of things. Um, I don't want to disappoint God. So therefore, this is where, you know, I'm supposed to be. And this is how I'm supposed to act and do. And so God then calls me in, in ministry. And it was actually um, one of my, my daughters, my baby daughters, that, that actually I said nothing to anyone about. She just came to me one time. She said, Mama, God, God showed me something. And um, well, I actually began it. We was at, at a Walmart parking lot at four o'clock in the morning and tears just came to my eyes because the pressure of, of, of God's pressing yeah. uh, on me going, uh, announcing publicly my calling was on me. But I was embarrassed because of the fact that, well, we were all going to church. Now just me and the kids were going to church and it is to be set up to where, you know, you should have that support. You getting ready to announce your call in ministry. You're already a female. That was a, that was a battle uh, at that time as well. And now you don't have that support. And now because he's mad at everybody at the church, he's not coming. So I'm like, wait a minute, God, you calling me. It, this it's a mess going on in me. You and I know it. I know I'm smiling. I know the grass looks greener on the other side, but the grass is artificial. Right. You know, I'm watering artificial grass. And and wow. so um, I began to just, you know, and, and the pressure was so much that I just couldn't rest. And I'm sitting in this Walmart parking lot with, with my baby. I Because I, I would go to the grocery store at 4 o'clock in the morning because five kids, after, when you take them to the store, you be in the buying Listen. stuff. You ain't have no... Ask us how we know. The store is relatable, <laughs> okay? Me, so my I God. Yes, yeah, so and she just happened to be up. I'm like, come on, go with me. And I just, I pulled up in the parking spot and I just started crying, like, out of, like, just crying. And she was like, mama, what's wrong? And I just, she said, tell me, mama, you're making me nervous. And then I said, you know what? I got to tell her because I don't want her to think that it's something, you know, deadly or that detrimental, that kind of thing. And so I shared with her um, the pressing that I had with God calling me in ministry. And she said, man, she said, and she goes to open the door. She said, oh, I knew that. And she was 13 years old at the time. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, God showed me in a dream. And she began to, sh to share with me what God had showed her. And what God has showed her is what God had already showed me almost a year ago that I just kept in me and didn't share with anybody because I said, nobody's going to believe me. They're going to look at me and say, your house ain't even right. How you uh -huh. going to, you know, that kind of thing. Come on now. And so that's what reserved me from doing it. And then she was like, mom, she said, I, he already showed me that. She said, you need to just do what God says. Yeah. Yeah. And she got out the door. And I mean, went on into the store like it was like it was nothing. And I mean, I'm I'm like, wow. 
Right. And so it was a couple of days later, I talked with talked with my pastor and he was he was like about time. Like every like everybody was everybody like know. about time. Right. It was like, you know, all that confirmation you was getting. All this confirmation. And and I, I shared with him that I was I was um that I was ashamed, I was embarrassed, I didn't know, you know, which way to go. All I knew is that I wasn't one that was running from God. I want to be used by God, but I didn't have the family dynamics together. Um, and and Pastor Russell was my pastor at that time. And he said to me, he said, this is not about family dynamics. At this all. is about what God has said. He said, if everybody who was called in ministry waited for everything to get together, nobody would be in the pulpit. Nobody. Nobody would be preaching. Nobody. And he said, this is not about you getting you together. This is about God needing you that to be used for a purpose for him. That's what he created you for. And if we waited to get every everything about us together and those around us together, we'll never do what God tells us to do. And when he said that to me, it's like, it just, I just started just getting with God spending time with him. In the meantime, with all of this, I, I shared it with, with my, my, my then husband. I shared it with him and he was like, God ain't called you into anything. Quit letting people fill your head with that. You're this, you're that. I was called every name you could think of. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so much to, to the fact that, you know, I thought some of them names was my middle name because mm -hmm. I carried it, you know, with me. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, tagging the tag of somebody else and what mm -hmm. they put on you and what they call you. Mm -hmm. um, so um, when I when I shared with him, then it was um, that's not true. Uh, God's not gonna call you. You just all the names you know, um, every name you can imagine uh, was called. Um, that's that's for people. That's you know. Um, that that's not that's not for you um it, very angry um and the anger um to me then ended up being turned into jealousy within which turned into envy uh because you can be jealous all day long envy acts upon that jealousy yes it does and it, it acts upon it in a way that can be detrimental that's right so, um it was um then it, it even came to a point uh, one time where it was you you got you two it's either me or the church mm. and i told them you know i i said then that well that's not a um that's that's not a hard decision because it has nothing to do with church everything that i do has to do with what god has has called me and what he's using me to do so that so what you're saying is it's between you or God. And right. if that is if that is the, the choice you're asking me to make, there that's not a hard choice to make. Because it, it's it will amazing always, that it will you, always I'm sorry. Um, excuse me for interrupting, but I'm intrigued that at such a young age mm -hmm. you were able to determine mm -hmm. that your calling was to the church, mm -hmm. but it was to your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. That's still a differentiation that people don't know even yes. today and been in church all their lives. Yes. How often do you hear people say that, you know, I'm called to the church, I'm called, you know, they never so much as say I'm called to do God's will or to work for the Lord, but it's the church, it's the church, it's the church. Exactly. But yes. now this pandemic has happened. <laughs> church, ha The church is outside of the wall. Come on here. Yeah. And, and and that's where we were supposed to be all along. Come on now. And, yeah, and so to give I, the clarity, yes, ma'am. I was just going to say that, you know, I noticed that when the pandemic happened that you've seen a lot of people panicking when the church closed. You've seen a lot of people uh, really just losing it because the church closed. And I think, um, I think the issue was that so many people have gotten so... Um, accustomed to putting all of their faith into the pastor the first lady or the you know the deacon that you know they've sort of forgotten about that intimate relationship with god and mm -hmm. i'll never forget in 2018 we were at a service like a new year's service and god told me tell the people 
that the day is going to come where they are not going to be able to ride on the coattails of their parents' prayers, their grandparents' prayers, that they are going to have to have a relationship with me all for themselves. Yeah. And that night, like God is always speaking to me. And that night I, I was not obedient. I was like, God, you know, you know, every time you get in the midst, he give you something. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, God, do I have to say something tonight? You know, can't mm -hmm. I just... And so I wasn't obedient, but then the time fast forward into today, this pandemic, you know, and it's the truth. That's yeah. why so many people were panicking because they have not been building that intimate relationship with God. It has been about the four walls, the church. And so, you know, that, that alone is a whole nother subject. Yes. Yes. Uh, because one of the things that, um, that my pastor shared with me about the calling is that there's two parts to your, there's one calling, but there's two parts to it. The first part is when you say, okay, God, I, I yield, I surrender uh, to be used by you. The second part is what you want me to do. What you want me to do. Every, everybody is not called to, to stand behind, uh, behind a book board and preach. Come on now. Everybody is not called to preach. You have different areas of ministry. But God, where do you want me? And that was one of the, and, and I did that without knowing there was two parts to the call when I fell on my knees and said, God, I surrender, you know, what it, and, and I mean, immediately God spoke to me and said, deliverance, ha! deliverance. And, oh. and every time, every time I look at teaching, uh, whether it's Bible study, whether it's preaching the word, um, through my ministry, Queens Ministries, everything that it's like it's, it's second nature to me that whatever comes out of my mouth that whatever i say my goal and my calling uh is to um put forth something that will encourage and pour into that you may be delivered and set free because you don't have to stay in it this is the place where i got to when it when the the uh you not so you god ain't calling you you know, and those kind of things like that. And my actually, my feelings wasn't hurt because I was so used to negative and not positive anyway. But the right thing to do was to share, you know, with him that because that's a that was an exciting part of my life. But it, but everybody's not going to be happy for you, even in your own household, even in your own family. Everybody's not going to be happy because everybody don't understand. Or like right. I said, there's jealousy, there's envy. It's you know, gonna come out. Right. And so I I began to start seeing God as a protector more than I had before because this is the way I saw it. I, and I said this to God. I said, God, you called me into something that I feel like uh, now I've got to fight for. And I don't believe that that's what you put me in for. But I have someone who's fighting me, like physically fighting me, verbally fighting me, mm -hmm. emotionally fighting me, mentally fighting. And I'm having to, I feel like I'm having to fight. I'm willing to do what you uh -huh. want me to do, but I'm, I'm, I'm feeling this, this fight. I'm feeling this fight. And all during this time, you know, I'm, I'm being physically abused, verbally abused, and most every, every abuse you, you can call in. I, I, that's what is going on all this time. And it was almost like he wanted to beat out of me that I will not do it, that I'll sit at home with him, that I won't go to church anymore, that I'll stop doing everything that I was doing because that's what, what he wanted me to do. Uh, but it seemed like the more he hit me, the stronger the I started. The more determined hitting. you was. Yeah, and it, and it was, and, and, and I'm going to tell you, people who say, well, you just need to get out and you just need to leave it. You threaten when you're when you're when you lose uh because that is what is being said to you um and then you don't have you to consider you got kids where are you gonna go who is gonna people can tell you come come to me come all day long but people are going only gonna let you stay in a house so long you know and then they're not gonna want that drama you know, know that, that person coming over there bringing that drama to their household. Exactly. And then if if he beat on you and I'm a woman staying at your house, what makes him feel like he won't come over there and try it with you? It's not an open and shut to shut situation mm -hmm. because you know where you where you want to leave on this end, mm -hmm. you can't on this end because mm -hmm. you got to take everything else in the middle in consideration. Right, right, right. 
But even my mindset, I, I went from um, being the pushed into the corner and the and the little puppy, you know, and the and the you know the low low low. I went from that to where I started rising. You can push a cat into a corner for so long, and he's gonna come out. out. He's gonna come out scratching, baby. Period. Now I came out scratching spiritually. I didn't come out scratching physically. That mm -hmm. made a difference. Because mm -hmm. as I came out scratching spiritually, I got my strength. I, I started finding my worth. And I said to God, I said, you don't beat on me. You don't mistreat me. You are the best daddy ever. You're a good, good father. So if you don't do it, why should I allow somebody else to do it? God said this to me. He said, I made a way of escape for you many times. You just never went. Facts. Mm -hmm. That blew my mind. That blew my mind because right after that is, is one of those, those, the tangent things started happening uh, again. And the, the behavior and the mindset were just flipping back and forth. You you didn't know when he walked in the door what, what was gonna don't take. You don't know, honey. You don't. And this particular um, I had I had spent some money and I'm I'm hey, I told you we real, we real up in here. Yes, I had spent some money. I never buy anything for myself. I always make sure everything went to to my kids. This particular time I bought me a sister Ashley, I bought me a a, a, a relaxer. Yeah. Dark and lovely. Yeah. I needed I needed uh under undergarments. So yes. I bought my bra that I was put I was safety pinning because I had lost so much weight mm -hmm. just from stress, worry, and excitement with the mm -hmm. calling. And mm -hmm. I was safety pinning, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um undergarments. Yes, ma'am. And I decided that I was going to go and just buy me a pack of underwear and, and, and a couple of bras and a dark and lovely firm for my hair and it went all over he went crazy you know I spent money I mean now y'all see how much they could possibly total and I have a job too but um he paid got he played golf he picked up a golf golf club which cost a four drive okay we we that's you can do see that's that's the thing sister see you can do what you want to do but you know how to do what they uh -huh. want to do. Do you know how do. common this is? Do uh -huh. you know how common this is in, uh -huh. in marriages and relationships, especially within the church? Do you know how many women or men are in relationships and they're basically like, I don't want to disappoint God. The church says if you divorce, you're going to go to hell. Do you know how many people are still in bondage in the church, in uh -huh. relationship? Uh -huh. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Because... Um, you 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 planned the wedding my and, god and and you got the church and you got it decorated and 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 it's it's about the wedding it's about the reception and you got all these people invited uh and you 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 go through all that process um again knowing that you had issues but yet yeah, you're gonna work them out you know you'll get over yeah. you'll work them out you're gonna so change them you do the wedding thing, um, not realizing that the marriage thing is different. Uh -huh. Because right. honeymoons do cease. Yes, ma'am. Right. And so you get, so what you do is now when you bump into the situation and, 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 and because it was about you joining you together, not God joining you together, you don't have the principles that, that God has for you for that marriage. You know, but, this is what I'm God getting old. Well, but but, I, know, but, I, but I'm you, but I'm getting old and, and I want to be touched because you know I'm in the church and I don't want to fornicate. So I need to settle for this man who I know God ain't gave me hmm. to satisfy my lust, to satisfy my urges. Oh, mm -hmm. but I'm I'm 35 now. Oh, mm -hmm. I, you know I, I want to have kids. You know, that's but you're gonna but but you're gonna get what you put um your standards at. Uh, you you gonna get what you asked for. You're gonna get what you settled for. And and see, we miss 
when 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 Jesus said what God has joined together let no man put asunder we missed the what God has joined together what we did and I know what I did in this marriage I put we put us together and that's what God revealed to me that's how I got rid of the guilt of disappointing God. That's how I got rid of listening. God heard hate the voice. Now y'all keep in mind now, God's calling me in ministry knowing what's going on with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that that right there is what sparked me to pay attention to God because what God was saying to me, I didn't put you together anyway. Yeah, so I ain't got exactly. no problem with you not being but together. But, 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 was, out. Mm-hmm. But, but but check this out. So you know you parent you know as parents we have children we want to teach them the right way. We don't want them to suffer the way we've had to go through. We don't want them to endure all the pain that we've had to endure. So we try to tell them, but they're fighting because they want to do what what they want to do. And you know as a parent at some point you take your hands off. God is the same way. God is so amazing and so awesome and love us so much that exactly. He'll say, "All right, I'm gonna give you what you want." But you know what? He allows it not for you to be hurt. He allows it for you to grow. Yeah. It, there's some things that we we can't protect our kids from. I don't care how much we try. Right, some right. things they the lesson has to be learned through experience. Right. When I when I stop listening to me and I start listening to God and what yes. His word is, then I begin to see. Wait a minute. God ain't said that. I'm saying that about yes. God. I'm saying that I'm disappointing him. I'm seeing those things. And so when the reality kicked in of the fact when he shared with me that he had already made a way for escape, it was like I was waiting to be hit. It was like I wouldn't even be hit no more. Uh, it was like four months. I was like, yeah. well, dang, I was hit every day. Yeah. Come on, hit me so I can leave. I was yeah. still waiting for the uh, the approval for so I can say, God it hit me. Now you know why I leave. Like it was, it was like I was waiting for that. And and then so I just went on like, okay, well, at least it's a little bit of peace. You know, I'll I'll figure this thing out. But when I went to the store and then I was fussed at for spending money, he picked up a golf club, swung it at my head. I didn't know what to do but to put my arm up. That's all I knew. And the golf club hit my arm and it swung. And it, God made my arms, uh, I mean, like steel. And his eyes got big and it was like, whoa. And he grabbed all the golf clubs, ran downstairs, locked himself in the, um, in my, my, my baby. Uh, my youngest baby was, uh, um, she was um, 17 at the time. She was the only one that was still home. And she looked at me and I looked at her. I said, get your stuff, let's go. When I uh-huh. walked out that door, it was like an elephant fell off me. The night before, I had a dream about a red door. And it's, that's all it was, was a door. When we left and I just went, I just went driving um, down this road, and when I turned down this road with these apartments, all the apartments were red doors. Wow. And I was like, and I went in, and I just went, and I started talking to this lady, and she said, well, I it just so happened that we have an apartment that is that is ready. If Like, I just broke down, and I just, I just told her what I had been That's through, right. and That's she right. said, she said, you know, we got an apartment that is ready. It's, 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 you know, $200 can get you in. I said, okay. I went down the street to the bank to get it. When I went down there, he had already went to the bank and wiped all the money out. It wasn't anything. Just like that, that quick. That quick. And um, so I went back to her and I told her, I said, I thank you, but I'm going to have to wait. You know, because I just went and there's, there's, I don't, I don't have anything. I like, I had just got paid everything. Like I didn't have anything. And she said, she said, no, she said, when you left, something came across where we do specials uh, for the first two months free. And then the third month, she said, and tomorrow it kicks in. So I'm going to go ahead because I can override it a day early and I'm gonna go ahead and get you set up. I didn't have to pay a dime. I didn't have to pay in like when I tell you as soon as I moved in the direction that I moved in from that day forward, God made sure everything that I had I needed. And I and, and I haven't looked back 
um, since then. I never, I, I never looked back, never, never thought about um, it. Because I you mean, was when I tell y'all, please. You when I tell, before you left, sis. Yes, when I when I tell y'all, it was so much peace. I didn't even know peace existed like that. Um, and so to to be into a a frame of mind, um, it was not God that was. And and, and I I want to go back to something because this is a this is a reality. This is Thank a truth me. that I want to also bring because I somebody I know. Um, is 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 in that situation in okay. that circumstance, okay. and a lot of times we talk about all what's happening and going on in it, but we don't talk about what the mind is doing. I talk about and where and where our mind is um, at that time. Yes, ma'am. Uh, because there was a time that as 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 much as my self esteem was low, um, and I and I I I went through some depression that I didn't know to call it that, but yeah, I can yeah. look back on and I can know that that was a part. There was a part where I went from hurt, crying, being being hit, but all those all those emotions. There was a point where I literally got pissed off, mm. and I haven't seen a movie, The Burning Bed. I I, I seen that. Farrah Fawcett was the one that Farrah uh, Fawcett. Yeah, and when I tell y'all. That that stayed in my head like for a month. I started strategizing too, girl. Oh my God. I think yeah. everybody go through that stage. Every and real okay. place. Well, if I was That's you, a real you place. Can't li- you can't listen to the yes, you can't listen to the if I was you, because you're not me. You're you're not me. We're in a different place. But reality is as much as you may say you won't take this, you won't take you've taken something. Taken something. You've taken something. Um, a lot of things, especially um, we, we're that's why we have to fight as women with with so many things. But when you gotta fight for your life and fight for your mental state mm-hmm. and 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 fight, you know, um, and you you go with from this level to this level to. And I thank God I have a heart for people that to the point to where I don't hate you, but 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 I but I sure enough don't like you. Right, and and I'm I was at the point to where my mind began. You just wanted to be free, though. When you get, I, I wanted to be free, but even and emotionally, freedom, though, you yes. don't want to carry the baggage of hating somebody. Yes, you don't want to carry the baggage of even just thinking about them and dealing with them. You just want to yes. be completely free. That was yes. my. Fault. That's what. My, I did. Yes, my children. My children saved me from that because <laughs> I thought about them. I thought about them. And and my children saved me from committing suicide. Yes, ma'am. I, yes, ma'am. I thought about them. Yes, ma'am. And yes, I said, ma'am. that's not fair. That's not fair to them. Yes, uh, yes, this ma'am. is a weight. It, it, it's a weight. It's a stronghold. It's this all of those things funny. wrapped up into one. Um, this particular part, I've never, I never shared with anybody about my inner thought of when I was really ticked off. Um, you know, with the suicide thought and with with the um with the um uh uh, uh the burning bed being my guide as to I, like hold up but then i i, I it, it was like god said you don't have to do that i got this right well thank and, for the and, god you heard him yes, because it's a real yes, place honey yes it and is. ain't no guilt weighing on you about it it's a yes. real place it's a real place with with reality mm-hmm. you know um sitting as the furniture you know, and Jesus. and so it, it's a place where you don't want anybody to go, but yeah. a lot of people are there, been there, done that, yeah. uh, yes. walking into it. Uh, so, someone right now is 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 contemplating. Yes. Don't do it. It ain't work. If you don't let do. God guide you, if you let God guide you, He got something for you that that you couldn't even imagine. When I walked out that door, and He had people set up to bless me. You know, I wanted to go to school. I put everything on to keep in mind. I, I didn't get to finish school. And 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 when I when I said I, I made up in my mind, I said, I'm gonna go get my GED because it's not that I'm not smart. I just didn't have a babysitter. Cause that thing that was working in my mind. You're dumb. You know, and he would say those things, you're dumb. You know, no, it wasn't because I was dumb. It was because 
I chose to be a mother and I didn't have anybody to keep my kids. Mm -hmm. And right. and so I went and I got my GED score the highest. They were like, how did you, why didn't you finish school? And I explained to them why, because my score was off the chart. Mm -hmm. There there wasn't, you know, that is, and I, I said, I always wanted to go to college. Those things I put on the back burner because I, I chose to be a mom, mm -hmm. but there was an opportunity when they started getting older that I could have started going back to school. No, you're not. You're not going back to school. Didn't want me to do anything. Didn't want me to 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 see and 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 I had to find myself. I had to, I had to, I, the first thing I did when I when I left and um and I got into the apartment, I signed up for school. That's the first thing I did. And I, I got my my associates and I got my bachelor's mm -hmm. and then I got a master's. And I'm mm -hmm. currently working on another master's in the mm -hmm. in the yes, uh, mm -hmm. You didn't stop message. Mm -hmm. yes, you didn't hinder message. Mm -hmm. All I had to do was get up under the the right one, <laughs> like 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 it's like you got it. the right one, baby. I yes, had the uh -huh. right one. Uh -huh. All I had to do was get up under the right one. And I know no people are saying, well, you know, God ain't moved for me like that. And what you got to let him. You got to hear him. You got to let him and he will move. This is, this is, I read this the other day in the book of Daniel where uh, Daniel had been praying to mm -hmm. God for an answer and he had been praying for 21 days mm -hmm. and the angel came to him and said, God gave me, gave the answer the first day you prayed. First day you prayed. He said, and I was on my way to give you the answer. But? Uh, but the, but the, but the, but the, 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 the prince of Persia. Yes, sir. Satan, demonic, the, the demonic angels uh -huh. blocked me. Uh -huh. And so God called upon the fighting angel. And to break through, and now I'm here with you. It's not that God didn't hear my answer the it's first not time. That God didn't hear the first time. It's that that it's that that the devil knew that if if I got wind of Psalms 139, that mm -hmm. I fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderfully that if made. I got wind, yes. that when God made me in secret. He didn't invite mom and daddy to the conference room, that it was totally about him, that I was not a mistake, that I right. came here for a purpose created for God by a purpose. He knew that if I got wind, that God was perfecting those things that concern me. He knew that if I got wind, that God wanted to use me in ministry for deliverance, that he knew he was going to lose a whole lot of queens. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So whatever he could do by whatever means are necessary to stop me, that's what his intention was. That's where my mindset had to go, that it must be something about me that God wants to do in me, that God will take care of me and get me where I need to be so that I could do what he called me uh, to do. I even told myself, I ain't have to worry about it no more. I'm going to be not a Paul, but a Paulette. I ain't got to have no hood. <laughs> You know, oh I don't have to be all too familiar. I, I'm going to be a Paulette and I'm going to be good and I'm going to be used, you know, for God because I went into a sabbatical where I went into a study um, trying to, I, I read all this studying about a wife and being a good one. I'm like, let me find out what I'm doing wrong. Let me find out what I'm doing. And oh I went into God. research and study and 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 and, and Peter, first Peter three and one, second Peter three and one be, became a wife, submit yourself unto your husband. Yeah. That even if they don't obey the word, they will be one by how you conduct yourself. Keep yourself meek and more. If he pray for him, if he don't All do right, it, yes, him yes. Prayer, don't let your prayers be hindered. I mean, I'm, I'm studying. I'm studying that submit yourself one to another. And yes. I'm changing. I'm changing. I'm like, whatever. Well, okay, hit me. I'm just going to keep being the humble little wife. Right, I'm right. keep submitting myself. You know, and mm -hmm. then I had to come to the reality that I'm submitting myself up under something that is not of God. That is not what God says. So I don't have to accept that because that is not of, of God. But I put myself into that study and that reading and I fast and pray. I lost 30 pounds trying to get myself together so that I could fix what I was doing wrong because mm -hmm. I was just tired of hurting hurting somebody it had to be something that i was doing wrong and when god got me out of that and i reflected back and i still can remember that study like it was yesterday i said i ain't gonna worry about it i'm i'm paulette now 
So I'm, yeah. I'm good. I ain't in yeah. it anymore. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm Paulette. You know, yeah. Paul went yeah. about ministry. He didn't get right. married because he right. didn't have time to get caught up right. after that because right. of the mission right. that he had. Right. And so I said, I'm a Paulette now. And and of course, that's 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 what I said. Because I'm like, I ain't got time for no other bad marriages. I ain't got no time for any of this. You know, I'm not going to be caught up into men because I really, to be honest, I really didn't know men anyway. Because remember, right. my first encounter was at 14 with, right. with a boy. Right. Right. So I never really had had the understanding and grasp of of a man loving me. Right. right. I never experienced that. So I was actually good with not having to fill with it anymore. Right. But lo and behold, lo and behold, that was not God's plan because I couldn't put all men in the same category. And God blessed me with a man that that. I, don't, I wouldn't even know marriage could be good. You wouldn't even be able to convince. And I remember sharing with him. I, I said, you know, I tried my best to do. And I was telling him about the study and the sabbatical that I went through. And he said, you don't have to explain anything to me. He said, I appreciate. He said, all of that. He said, everything that you do, uh, that you think you were doing for somebody else. He said it wasn't for that person. It was for it was for what God had coming. Preparation, preparation. Total preparation. And 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 my husband now he he blessed me with that. He blessed me with that. And and everything I I didn't get, it, God gave it to for to me through him. He made uh, up and for then it. some, and 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 then some, and then some more, and. I understand what love is. I understand what being taken care of is about. I understand what um, having a voice. Yeah. Having a voice. Sometimes our voice, well, y'all see how, y'all see how, like, y'all see how I get yeah. <laughs> when my passion comes out. Yeah. Yeah. But, but everybody can't take me because of where I am right now. Okay, now. Okay, now. Because where I am right now, I'm in a different place than where I was back then that's right i, I my self-esteem is not low no um, ma'am i i have one of my my uh events that i do and one when i had them one time i just made the comment out the blue you look almost as good as me i shared that with one of the the ladies that came up and and it stuck and so year after year i whenever i see and even even now and i say you look almost as good as me i got t-shirts that say you look almost as good as me and one lady said to me that's kind of arrogant you say that she said I love if she you, knew baby. your story she, she wouldn't said, be okay. saying that she said that's kind of arrogant. and i said no baby let me share something with you i said if you don't think you look good why are you gonna wait for somebody else to tell it to you you got you have to encourage yourself and when i say you look almost as good as me what i'm saying is i used to then think i look good Mm. See, it allows me to tell my story. Mm. And it, that, was, that it's about the self-esteem. It's about how I see me. I can't be concerned about how you see me. I can't let you call my name because God has already given me my name. So, so you can't you can't change you can't name change or change the name. You can't you can't go to no spiritual court and try to change who God has already said I am because I'm a masterpiece. I'm a divine original. When he made right. me, he broke the mold. Right. There is none other like me. I'm man. not cloned. Original. I'm not duplicated. That is. I can't that be is. duplicated or implicated. I am who I am. And so when I say you look almost as good as me, what I want you to say is I look good too. Right. That's Period. a self-esteem builder. I want to encourage you. And so now when I see a, a lot of ladies out in a, they come, they're like, hey, you look almost, look at you looking almost as good as me. And I'm like, that's it. That's it. That's what I want you to grab hold to. Because we have to tell, first of all, I said, I can't encourage you, Sister Deb. I can't encourage you, Sister Ab, uh, Ashley without first being encouraged myself. I can't give you anything. I can't pour anything out to you if, if I first don't believe it myself. It, it just, it, I just, it just can't happen. Amen. And I had to learn to love me. I had to learn to love me. Indy is one of my favorite singers. And she has yes. a song 
the video. I'm not the average girl on the video. And I ain't been like a supermodel, but I learned to love myself unconditionally and that's because I am a queen. That's something I had to learn. To I had do. to love me. Right. I had to love me. And we accept and we take these and we, we accept things because we haven't learned to love us. Why? We don't know us. That's the key. We've let somebody else tell us who we are. And we've answered to it. And we've answered to it. As we get ready to... Um, as we get ready to wind down, this is what yes. I want you to do because you have, you have just told the story of, you know, a place of bondage and recovery. Mm. And you have made sense mm. to the story. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what it, what talk about before we, because I'm going to give lady Ashley an opportunity to come in for about three minutes, but Talk to us about the mind change. Because when you left, it was over. You did not look back. So people need to understand that once they transition, once they get out of that place of darkness, light is awaiting. Light is it's so much in store. It's so much awaiting life. Not just light, but life is waiting for you to live. Mm -hmm. So for people that are like, are not, they're not sure that they can recover. They're not mm -hmm. sure that what they have gotten used to, that something better is waiting. Could you talk to somebody about that mind change? Mm -hmm. Because God don't let nothing slip up on his people. He deal with us. He speak to us. We just got to believe that the goodness that's being spoken to us, it is the voice of God. Mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that I believe in um, simple, um, uh, keeping it so simple, making it simple, so they can have a, a, a understanding, an easy understanding, and that's how Jesus would do. When Jesus taught, he he said it, and it was simple. You could you could grasp hold to what he was saying. Okay. Simply this: you gotta get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Until you get tired of being sick and tired. You're going to stay sick and you're going to be tired. So you got to, first of all, get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And then secondly, I would say, don't be afraid to start over. Don't be afraid to start over because sometimes start over is good. My The starting over, even even though I had to scramble eggs one day, boil them the next day, fry them the next day, cut some potatoes over the next day for like a month, because as remember I, I told you, all the money was gone. I had to wait for my next paycheck and then the next paycheck, but and I opened some Van Camp pork and beans and I added bologna with them, fried tomatoes and onion, and I was happy. It didn't, it didn't matter. I rolled pennies for gas. It didn't matter. Don't be afraid to start over because start over might be exactly what you need. Uh -huh. And and we think we can't because somebody has told us and our mind has grabbed to it that we can't make it without them. Um, it's it's okay to start over. It's there's nothing wrong with starting. Matter of fact, starting over could be one of the best things that you could do because starting over means that you doing something new and different outside of what has kept you into um into bondage into yes. bondage and and you know we know how we feel when we when we um put on something new or we 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 put on something to make ourselves feel feel better about ourselves um that's the same same kind of thing don't remodel your life at that time do something new do something different um, it may it may be um, it may be a struggle, uh, you know. Every label that has been given to you is not who you are. When you know who you are, then you can trust that God's gonna help you to be even more what He has created you to be. I I don't I don't take it lightly when I say anything concerning God because He is the one that got me through. Amen. And and he will take care of you. Amen. But you got to you got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. 
Okay. And don't listen to other people about what you need to do because you you have to find you. You have to find you. Thank you for the sisters who have you back and, and support you with it. But you got to be the one to make up that decision because if you do leave and then you decide to go back, they're going to be mm. mad at you. When you when you leave, make sure, make sure that's what you are, are, are being directed to do. Not that somebody's pushing you to it or guilting you in it or, you know, because they don't they don't know what you're going through. But when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you won't go back. You you won't go back and you'll know. You'll That's know. Right. You'll know. You'll have peace. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, this has just been amazing. Lady Ashley, I need for you to just jump in for a couple of minutes and share because um, encourage you know, a list, encourage the listener, because I just feel this is such a place of love right now. And the importance of forgiveness, forgive yourself. Right. So, um, you know, there's not really a lot that I have to say tonight because, you know, Queen has said it all. Uh, but for me, I would like to encourage the listener, that woman who is going through um, whatever it is that they're going through, that man who is going through what they are going through, because men, they endure this as well. It's not it just a woman issue. Yes, that's so right. I would like to encourage you to, number one, be brave and take off the mask. Because a lot of times we wear a mask with a smile. We wear a mask where we're, we're strong. And, and it's not to say that you're weak. Um, I just want to encourage you to all those things that you are wearing on you that are fraudulent, take them off. Because I think taking the mask off is the first brave step that you can take. I don't know if you wear makeup, but if you wear makeup, you know, sometimes your skin begins to break out. You know, you begin to get these scars over your face. And at some point, you have to stop wearing that makeup in order for your face to heal. And at some point, you got to take that mask off in order for your soul, your spirit to heal. So I just want to encourage the person who may feel like they're not good enough, who may feel like maybe they're not worthy enough for peace, who may feel like maybe i can't get out of this situation i want you to be brave i want you to take that initial step i want you to find a mentor find someone who you can trust who you can relate to find someone who's going to encourage you find someone who's going to help be that strength that you need uh, we know that god is your strength but it's a beautiful thing when you can have a physical strength too um and just you know take charge of your life take charge of your life because as women i think sometimes it's so easy for us to lose who we are in our marriage, in our children, and whatever it is that we're involved in. But I encourage you to take control of your life because your life belongs to you. Thank you so much, Lady Ashley. Uh, Demetria High, the queen. Man, thank you so much for sharing uh, this morning because you are truly an example of an overcomer because you laid it, you laid it down from A to Z. And I pray that the listeners have heard you talk about being in a place and coming out victorious. Mm -hmm. That's what's important. You came out victorious and you are growing in such a place. You still, you're not through. Mm -hmm. God is not through with you yet. Mm -hmm. Amen. You, you still got many mountains to climb. Hallelujah. Glory. And many rivers Glory. to cross. Mm -hmm. You still have that. And I'm think, I'm so encouraged that you were such a listener when it came to hearing God at such a young age. So for those of you that are listening, the enemy is not going to tell you anything good. He's not yeah. going to brag on you. He's not going to tell you anything to make you feel good. So just know that any ugly that's coming to your mind, it is not God. Yeah. But if you hear the voice saying to get out, I'm with you, please know. That is God. Yes. And there's life to live on the other side. We got Amen. a witness today. Amen. The quote from Monday is set a goal so big that you can't achieve it until you grow into the person who can. That's a beautiful quote. I'm Coach Dan. Thank you so much for tuning in to Reveal and Heal. And remember, I always tell you, you can't heal what you don't reveal. Thank you, Lady Ashley. I see that you're working early this morning, girl, grinding. <laughs> I see you. Thank you once again. I love you, dear. Mm -hmm. I love you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you, Facebook Live. Y'all, please share, share, share. Remember the one that re shared a replay 
um, the most will win, uh, of course, a giveaway. Okay? So tag your friends. Tag someone that you believe that needs to hear this. Have an amazing day. God bless you. God bless you.